Chi Martin. Ça va, ok. Très bien. Tosha, Tia. Très bien. Ça, Tosha, Tia. Ok. Tu peux ma Ok. Ça va. Hey, that's pretty cool. If true, I'm thinking it might be cobalt what they use to make electric car batteries with. CGI Somebody say the pig He in there fighting for dear life you face north when you sleep, you'll be more connected and better sleep. Yeah. Every time you didn't sleep well, yeah. maybe check the direction you're you're sleeping. Okay. And then that's why people say like you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe you woke up on like this side of the bed and you weren't facing north or wherever yeah. you usually face. Cause yo, look, Loki. Cause uh, I know you probably have better sleeps than Pickering. Cause mm. you said you even like fucking. And it's sleeping facing here. north. Really? Yeah, it is. Like, okay, because I have this. I have better sleeps than Pickering too than here. So I might and have to. Is it facing north? You have to check. Yeah, I have to check. But I'm facing like this way. I'm actually facing north. Like I. T <laughs> but even though our our bedrooms are small, and shit, imagine like we we changed since that theory came up. Oh, we just <laughs> Like, we we rearranged all the uh, furniture. Uh, our layout is so shit. Like it's yo. Like, tap in in the comments which direction you guys sleep yeah. in, and tap in if you guys actually no good try. No, like actually try sleeping in north. Yeah, and let me know if it actually affects your sleep because it might. It yeah, yeah. might. Everybody's bed layout is about to be different. After yeah. this. Morbid movie facts, part one. David Holmes was Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double for the Harry Potter films until his career was suddenly ended by a freak accident. While filming for the Deathly Hollows, Holmes was thrown too hard against the wall and ended up breaking his neck, paralyzing him from the chest down. Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus in The Passion of the Christ, was struck by lightning during filming. This led to two separate heart surgeries that took more than a decade for him to fully recover from. On the very last day of filming the movie Titanic in Nova Scotia, many crew members including James Cameron were poisoned by clam chowder that was laced with PCP. 80 people had to be hospitalized and the culprit was never identified. Judith Barcy, the child actor who voiced Ducky in The Land Before Time, had an abusive alcoholic father who was jealous of his daughter's success. 1982, he murdered 10-year-old Judith along with his wife before taking his own life. Disturbingly, Judith had previously played the role of a child who was murdered by her father in the show Fatal Vision. So we all know this verse from the Bible, be sober minded because the enemy is proud like a roar lion, seek for souls to devour, right? Yeah, watch this. They are convicted of stabbing her boyfriend to, to death, only gets a slap on the wrist. She, she faced the possibility him. of life in prison for stabbing him 108 times. But the judge ruling that she had no self-control while in a cannabis-induced psychosis. Todd Pyro is live in the studio with the shocking details. Todd. This is a head-scratcher, Ainsley. The judge is sentencing 32-year-old Bryn Speecher to 100 hours of community service, two years probation, and the big one, no jail time. She broke down in tears after a jury convicted her of involuntary manslaughter last month. California judge claims she had no control over her actions after stabbing the victim, Chad Omila, 108 times. Psychiatrists in the case claim the incident was, quote, 100% caused by cannabis-induced psychosis. The crazy part is, is I know people personally who said they would never touch cannabis again because they had intrusive thoughts of 187 in everybody in the house. Now we see that scripture coming alive and be sober-minded because the enemy is prowling like a real lion. 
Seek for the souls to devour. Let me know what y'all think about this video in the comments. Like and follow for more wisdom. Hey, I know a few people that can't handle it, but over a hundred times to your boyfriend? That's doing way too much. I think she deserve a little time to think about her actions. These are the worst races on earth. Honestly, the thought of some of these actually makes me feel ill. First of all is the Desabales Marathon in Mexico. It is a six day marathon that goes 154 miles. Yeah, no thanks. I'm gonna chill here. And this is all through the Sahara Desert in Morocco. Nah, not for me. Next up we have the Barclay Marathon. Now this at first glance doesn't actually look that bad. It seems quite fun. It's basically an escape. You're gonna be running all through the forest and people are gonna be chasing you like giant manhunt. But it's essentially 54 hours of hell. To get into this race, you only have to pay one pound, and if you actually do get in, you get sent a letter of condolence. Next up is Ice Ultra, which, you know, looks pretty sick, but also makes me feel violently sick. It is a 146 mile race through the Arctic. Not just the Arctic, Arctic mountains. Even better, nah. Couldn't think of much worse. Freezing cold, climbing mountains, fantastic. Finally, this has to be the worst thing I have ever seen. If you've done this, why? This is known as the Dragon's Back, which is a 236 mile race in Wales in the UK, literally running over the top of rigid mountains for nearly 300 miles. I'm all, I'm all good, mate. Like, imagine one fall. You can literally see why it's called the Dragon's Back if you look at the top of the mountains and the shape of it. Why? But anyway, hit that follow button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Did you know when you die, your soul go to the moon, and the moon take your soul and throw it right back on Earth? Watch this. The moon is a life review program. Once you get to the moon, they show you how bad your life was. So you can say, shit, I want to do it all over again. And once you agree to it, guess what? You come right back to this planet. 2024 is going to expose every lie that was told in the Matrix. 2024 is number eight. Number eight is the hidden number. Seven days of the week is a program. They want us stuck on number seven, so we won't overstay what number eight really means. When you ride down the street and you see these traffic lights, did you know these traffic lights actually program your soul to believe a certain way? When you are looking at these colors, they're not really traffic lights. They are your chakras that's upside down. Every color they use in this matrix is actually attacking one of your chakras. If you don't understand how your chakras work, you will always be stuck within your chakras. Next time you ride down the street and you see these traffic lights, turn it upside down so you can have a better idea of what's going on. Remember, 2024 is number eight. We have eight planets in our solar system. We have eight phases to the moon. Number eight is really important, but they keep it from us for a reason. Even when it comes to spiritual Spirituality, they be lying. They said we only have seven chakras. Seven chakras and seven days of the week is all connected. This is a false program. We really have eight chakras, but if we keep focus on number seven, the crown, we will never understand what the soul star is. The soul star is our eight chakra. The soul star represents the full moon because the full moon is the eight phases or the eight cycle of the moon. Remember, the moon eats our energy until we get full. And once they get full, it take our energy and push it all back to us. The full moon is the artificial official eighth chakra or the soul star so while we're distracted trying to reach our crown chakra the people that control this matrix are still in our soul star the soul star represents everything because it's all about abundance that's why number eight is so important because 2024 is going to break down every lie that was ever told to us we about to get the truth back to us remember they use numbers to program everything in the matrix because once you follow these numbers you can actually be numb but the number eight is coming to all of us Number seven is their program, but what they did was they flipped reality upside down. So now we don't understand what our true mission is. Hey, y'all think we getting recycled? I said in a previous video that people will probably be big in a comeback. The total solar eclipse is happening this April, and most of North America will be able to see at least some part of it. It will begin in Mexico on the western coast around 11 a.m. Pacific time, and end around 4 p.m. Eastern time in Maine. The Planetary Society has an interactive map to help you determine the best time and location, since the next one won't happen around here for another 20 years. Their interactive map is super cool. You can choose your state and see where the direct path will be, along with a list of viewing locations, and how long the eclipse will last in each spot. Fuck. Obviously, it all depends on the weather, but even if you're not directly under the main path, these lines will show you what percentage of the eclipse you can see. The site is planetary.org slash eclipse, so be sure to check it out so that you can make your plans in advance. Why in the world are schools closing for the April 8th solar eclipse? And it's not just one school, but several school districts across several states. You have school closures in Maine, Cincinnati, Arkansas, 
Kentucky, Indiana, and Texas. I don't know about you guys, but I've been alive for 30 years of my life, and I've never heard of schools closing for a solar eclipse. If anything, they would use this for a teaching lesson for the kids at school to look at the solar eclipse while wearing a welding hood. Now here's where the conspiracies and the speculations come in. Some people believe the New Madrid fault line right here, where the solar eclipse will be passing, will let loose. Now there's some weird coincidences with this pathway. Uh, this pathway on April 8th will cross over several Ninevehs. There's a Nineveh here in Texas, a Nineveh over here, I believe in either Indiana or yeah, I think Indiana. Also right here, you have Little Egypt. And clearly, hopefully you understand the symbolism with judgment coming upon Nineveh and judgment that came upon Egypt. And we understand that America is the new Egypt. Now, are these school closures a forewarning or a sign of something coming? guess we'll find out in a couple months. Now some people are comparing this to the Maui fires where they released the kids because of high winds supposedly before the fires even came. I don't know. Uh, that's a conspiracy theory rabbit hole that you can go down. Again, people are comparing that event by releasing the kids to this event for them releasing the kids. For hey, that is weird that they letting these schools out because I can remember when I was in elementary, they had us poke holes in the paper or something like that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if y'all did the same thing in school. I mean, what do you guys think? It's kind of funny to look through all of this and see it. Pens. And here's the other thing, too, is what people were having at the exhibits don't even go with the buildings. Like, you're coming up with the best pen in the world, you know, or the best ink or whatever, but then you have, you know, like the detail of something like this. It's just absolutely remarkable. You know, and the statues, and the, and they had electric fountains, they had over, uh, I think it was five million light bulbs, you know, so it doesn't make any sense. It was like the world was reset, and then all of a sudden you had this fair so that you could teach people how to live. I mean, I even think about our food sometimes. I mean, we got every diet in the world, but we don't even know how to eat. And we get into, this is like a lot of like different photography. And, and we talked about the trains before too. They demolished a lot of the trains. You know, this was all there beforehand and then they just kind of throw their name on it. And they put their name on here. And then we got all the different people. This is an interesting one, lots of windmills. They talk about they had lots of wind pumps. This was very fascinating. And this looks like an oil rig. Boy, it's interesting. Oh, this is a really good one. I like this. This is the, the plum exhibit of hammers and tools. Now, if you guys look at that, I can kind of move that kind of like that. It's a very interesting building for hammers and tools and very intricate detail. You know, and if this was a temporary event, imagine setting all this up too. You know, you every exhibit, you know, so that people could come. Here's here's a really interesting one. This is a bird's eye view of the fair. So they must have put the water in place as well. You know, they just kind of moved the water and then set up the building. And this building's no longer there. This building's no longer there. There's only one building still standing. We pretty much got rid of all of this. And then according to climate change, as we're always told about, that's probably why the water's gone. You know that funny, funny story. And then there's more buildings. You guys can see these, these are fisheries. This is the electricity hall, which is under construction, which is funny. You know, they, they'll give you always one photo of the construction photo. I mean, imagine building all of this. You know, you would have a lot more photos than just, you know. Hey, that is a little suspect for them to just build that and take it down. Do y'all think that was even a real building or was it just like a shell mold over wood? Me and spiders do not get along. Um, <laughs> it's not on my teeth. 
TV. It's in my TV. There are ants in my TV. Here. Here. They have created a hive. You know that we have like way more than these five senses, right? Our six senses actually our sense of balance. And the most shocking thing about that is that there is an actual organ responsible for our sense of balance. And yet most people have absolutely no clue where it is. And when you ask people to guess, they typically always get it wrong. Like where would you think it's located? Matter of fact, pause the video here and put your best guess in the comments because this is going to surprise you. Most people think that it would be located like somewhere in their midsection or like somewhere along their spine or something. But nope, not even close. I'm here to tell you that the organ that is responsible for your sense of balance is actually located on the inside of your ear. It's called the vestibular system and it's a small little system of three tubes that are located on the inside of your ears. Those tubes are filled with liquid, right? So when you tilt your head, the liquid trickles down and tickles some sensors because of gravity. And those sensors are the trigger that sends the message to the brain that you must be off balance. And humans aren't the only animals that have this, like cats, your dogs, even fish have it. And some animals can do really cool things with theirs. The vestibular system in chickens is why they're able to keep their head so still even when their body is in motion. Hey, I seen somebody with vertical one time. It looked like they was just toppling over head first. How many slaps does it take to cook a chicken? This has actually been done. So you can Google the answer, but I'm not going to. Let's estimate. I'm going to need to know a few things. One, how heavy is my hand? Two, how fast is the slap? Three, how much does the chicken weigh? Four, how much energy will it take to cook that chicken? And then I can just figure out the number of slaps necessary from there. So first, let's estimate the size of my hand. Just taking a wild guess, it's about seven inches long, three and a half inches across, and about three quarters of an inch thick. Converting this metric, it's about 300 cubic centimeters. Now, I'm going to assume that the hand, because it's not filled with a whole bunch of fatty stuff, is a little bit more dense than water, so let's just say 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. And that'll give me a mass of about 450 grams. Now, I have no idea how fast a human can slap, so I'm going to use claps as a way of figuring that out. I'm going to estimate that a person can clap at like full force and full speed, maybe 120 times per minute. And the distance between your hands may be seven inches. And so the round trip distance that one of your hands is going to travel is going to be say 14 inches if we're assuming that the other hand is stationary. Given how many claps we can make per minute, we can figure out the average speed of your hand during a clap. Converting to metric, it's about 4,200 centimeters per minute. That seems high, but let's go with it. Now the formula for kinetic energy is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. So we can use that using the numbers we've already computed to find how much energy each of my slaps has. This is going to be in really weird units, but it's about 4 billion grams centimeters squared per minute squared. As an American, I only know stuff about chickens and freedom units. So let's say that a chicken weighs about two and a half pounds once it's prepped for cooking. Also, I know that a refrigerator is kept at around 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and you want to cook chicken to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's a 120 degree Fahrenheit difference. We will convert back to metric units later, but for now, let's just keep those numbers in mind. I also know that the specific heat of water is about 4,000 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. That is, in order to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degree Celsius, you need to input 4,000 joules of energy. I'm going to assume that a chicken is basically water. It's obviously not true, but it's an estimate. So there's about 2.2 kilograms in a pound. There's five ninths of a degree Celsius in a degree Fahrenheit. So we can multiply all these numbers together to figure out how much energy we need to add to the chicken to cook it. This works out to be about 300,000 joules. So dividing that energy by the amount of energy per slap, we get about 2.6 million slaps. So this has actually been done. Let's check it out. So it looks like this guy actually did it. So scrolling down, we get about 135,000 slaps. So we're off by about an order of magnitude, which isn't so bad for these, but I am curious as to where the mistake was made. So I did some Googling and it seems like the average human punch is around seven meters per second compared to our slap that we calculated of about 0.7 meters per second. So even taking half that speed for a slap, we would have gotten a lot more of a reasonable value for the amount of slaps necessary to cook the chicken. But that's okay. The whole purpose of this is to get within an order of magnitude of the actual result. And I think we did. Also, this just means that any person can gently slap a piece of chicken and they'll cook it after about two and a half million slaps. If you thought this was fun, go ahead and put in the comments another thing that you want me to estimate. I'm happy to do it. But make it specific and make I bet you at least one person watching this video about to go slap some chicken. But that's pretty crazy for somebody to even attempt to slap a chicken over a million times to see if it could. I'll tell you what, that person that did that, that probably slapped the soul from your flesh. Alright, I'm sure you've seen this. Last night I saw that house uh, blew up in Virginia, right? So this may be nothing, or it may be something, I'll let y'all decide. But after I saw this, today I saw something very odd. Before I show you that, you know, this is the second house that just literally combusted, just blew up in a few months. That's kind of suspect. 
This is the weird part. If a house blew up, you would expect some police, some ambulances, etc., uh, fire trucks. Look at this. All this, these hundreds of cop cars, hundreds of all this coming in there because one house blew up. That's weird. So I don't know about y'all, but when I see a massive turnout like this right here for what they claim to be a house fire, it reminds me of Miami, Florida, when there were hundreds, if not thousands, of police cars and detectives when they said that it was just kids playing in the mall. Anyways, I'm going to give you two clues. Kelly Woods, one of the people that lives in the house. Also, a company being ran from the house, RSC Enterprises. Good luck. Have you guys heard of Babel X? So the FBI just invested in millions of dollars into tracking your social media account. Check this out, y'all. The FBI just purchased 5,000 license for this program called Babel X. Babel X is like, I don't know if you guys remember, I, used, I talked about last October, this program called Fog Data Reveal Service. It's basically the same thing. All your social media, your social security numbers, your uh, personal uh, records is in this database. You guys look it up. It's from Babel Street. It's called Babel X. And the FBI just bought 5,000 licenses to use this platform to gather information on random citizens whenever they want. And they can do it without a warrant. And imagine if Babel X, all the data in there was connected to this blockchain address, which is 100% identified to you because it's your literal DNA footprint. And so that's what I was thinking in the future. All this gathering of DNA may be just a way to permanently identify you because they can sequence that into a blockchain. And then once we all are on this federal blockchain, our addresses are literally going to be. And now you know why 23andMe and Ancestry.com, all those DNA websites were created because it was actually the FBI and the CIA and the NSA that created those things in order to get your DNA. And now you don't know what your DNA is actually being used for. You might be on the next episode of First 48. Never know. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. You already know we in the shift, y'all. Let's get it. Peace out. The Illuminati's plan for world domination. All laid out. You were right. Of course I was. It was only a matter of time. What are you? How do you know my name? Oh, I know lots of things. Yo, I got some heat lined up. Just click these two buttons. It's a lot of symbolism in these shows and movies. And some of these shows be real old when people weren't even paying attention. In the Bible, TikTok doesn't describe Yeshua looking like this. So I'm gonna let that slide. Did you know the story about the pigs? Shout out to you if you eat pig. I don't. Here's why. Run that video, comment below, and this is for educational purposes only. Shares with some of you love, can respect. Run it. People believe that pigs contain the souls of banished humans. Hmm. I'm not even gonna cap with you. When I heard this, I was like, what the f It makes so much sense to me. One, I'll say this already. If you look at a pig's eyes, they strangely look, they look human. human. Yeah, they look weird. There's even a quote in the Bible. 
even the demons didn't want to go to hell, they begged Jesus to put them into the bodies of pigs. Really? Yes. There's just so many other things of, apparently, bro, pigs can't not even look up at the sky. Really? If they yes. wanted to. If they wanted to, they can't. Cannot look up at the sky. So basically, that's saying, like, you'll never even be able to, like, look, look up on the heavens. Yeah. That's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? And on top of that, bro, most religions do not eat like, pig. You know yeah, what I mean? They yeah. say, like, don't eat that, bro. It's, it's, Pork, it's not, yeah. yeah, at all. They don't want you to eat pig. I remember there's one thing that stuck out to me, bro, and it just confirmed this for me, too. I remember there was a serial killer who he used to eat people, and somebody interviewed him and asked him, what does human beings taste like? And this damn near said, it tastes like pig. Yeah, I remember, um... What's and there's a bunch of other people that have said that that were cannibals. Yeah, what's the face of the guy um, that was turning people into burgers? Yes, he said it, too. He said it tasted like pork. You're talking about uh, Joe Metheny? Yeah, Joe Metheny, yeah. Yes, bro, that's insane he said it, oh, it tastes like pork that's great all these people said that, like human beings taste like pork so it's like is that why because in the bible tiktok doesn't describe yeshua looking like this so i'm gonna let that slide did you know the story about the pigs how about you sound frequency can heal the body better than any pharmaceutical medicine that you can find so vibrations or sounds or music itself is healing within itself already you can listen to sound binaural frequencies to heal the body or you can literally chant and hum like real shit you can hum to heal your body i'm pretty sure we've all heard of the um humming sound and this sound that we can do it vibrates at a frequency of 432 hertz which is the same vibrational frequency found throughout every thing in nature and honestly not even just that i'm gonna keep it more real with y'all you ever been around a cat and they start purring and you like what the fuck is they doing cats can create purr vibrations within a range of 20 to 150 hertz which are medically therapeutic for many diseases but if you got a cat and your cat is purring around you it's literally healing your body with sound frequency like actually how amazing is that and this same frequency has been shown to aid in healing of broken bones joints and tendon repair and wound healing and not only just that let's take it a little bit further the cat one is definitely my favorite one out of this fact though have y'all ever seen these huge bells in cathedrals these bells also resonate and vibrate at a frequency that can heal the body and these were actually known by many people to do this to heal the body but over time they were used less and less because you know why and last but not least we got the singing bowls i'm pretty sure you've seen these somewhere on social media these work the same way by emitting a healing sound vibrational frequency like literally if you was to lay down while the person was playing this around you your body would be so healed after you would feel so good because these things can literally repair your cells and all of the things i just showed you can help you get into a relaxed mind state let me know y'all's thoughts on this in the comments sound is powerful can you imagine walking to a room with a thousand of them bowls just humming probably pass out shaking in the sky what's this anomaly some people are saying it's the sun how can it be the sun it's below the skyline how can the sun be below the skyline of the earth some people say it's the moon same question then how is the moon below the skyline of the earth how is this even possible what is this if it's the sun then i guess the sun is in the earth's atmosphere huh i'm not saying it is I just want someone to explain to me what this is, because it's weird. Here's another weird one. The sun and something right next to it. Is it two suns? Is it the sun and another planet? I don't know. And this is even weirder still. It's the sun with something big and bright right behind it. Right behind it? The sun and the moon? I don't know. The sun and another planet? Maybe. But I'm not sure. What do you think? Leave me a comment on what you think all this weird phenomena in the sky is all of a sudden. Because to tell you the truth, I don't know. One thing I know yeah, for sure, though, know. is the Which sun is in isn't the in the Earth's atmosphere. So what the heck was the first thing? Let me know what you think. Shabbat